Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is the former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. He joins us from his residence in uh, Lahore. Uh, he is on bail uh, since May 13. He had been arrested a few days earlier while appearing in a court in a corruption case, prompting a wave of uh, violent protests and arrests. Mr. Khan, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, could we say uh, that you're essentially under house arrest uh, while other other cases are pending? It's, uh, put it this way, I'm isolated because all my top leadership is arrested. Uh, over 10,000 of my workers have been arrested. Anyone who supports PTI is either arrested or has gone underground. So people are hiding now. So, um, so basically, I mean, uh, um, I'm quite isolated right now. Right. Uh, this uh, Friday, uh, the Interior Minister announced that 33 of your supporters have been handed over to the army to face uh, military trials uh, on charges of attacking military installations in the aftermath of your arrest. And he indicated in a press conference that yourself could face a military court. What is your reaction to this? Well, first, let me talk about myself. There are 150 cases on me right now. And four of the cases were when I was in prison. For four days, they put me in prison. So what happened when I was in prison? I was completely cut off from everyone else. How was I involved in four criminal cases when I was in prison? So what, what is happening is that the government and the establishment are petrified that whenever there are elections, and these, this is election year in Pakistan, that my party will sweep the elections. So what they're trying to do is to get me out of the way either in prison and what they have done now is this complete crackdown on anyone who is a PTI uh, a supporter, anyone who gives funds to the party, uh, the political workers. There's a complete unprecedented crackdown. People are in jails right now, including women. Never in our history have women been treated the way they have been. So therefore, uh, the situation right now is that they are desperate to, to uh, dismantle my party, which is PTI. And one of the tactics now they are using is our military courts, because normal courts find it very difficult to convict anyone on these false charges. So I get bail in every case because the cases are frivolous. But now this new tactic coming in of military courts which basically means the end of our democracy. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, over the past few days, several prominent members of your party have either left their position, quit, including two former ministers, uh, Shirin Mazari, Fawad Chaudhry. Uh, is this the beginning of the end of uh, the PTI? I should add that the defense minister said that the government is considering a ban on your party for attacking the state. Well, first, let me explain what what they are, the reason why they are trying to ban the party. And what's the reason behind it? What happened was that when I was I was on bail, I I, I was sitting in the precincts of the High Court in Islamabad, and the the Rangers, which is the army, out of nowhere they came. They did a commando action. They beat up people around me. They beat up the staff of the high court, and then they took me as if I was some sort of a terrorist. And it was all illegal. I was abducted. Now, when the images went out, there was going to be a reaction. But unfortunately, they were, this was used as a way, and I quote, this is exactly what Adolf Hitler did in 1933, when he used the fire in the Reichstag in the parliament as a way to crush the communist. This is what they've done right now. If there are two or three military buildings, especially the core commander house, they were affected because of arson. Well, take action against those people who were involved. How come all over Pakistan, anyone who's at PTI has been arrested? Over 10,000 people, how can you arrest 10,000 people? And any who had nothing to do with arson. So it was just a pretext to really demolish my party, dismantle my party. And that's what they're doing right now. 
And this, uh, these military courts is just, uh, I mean, unheard of in a democracy. It means basically that our, our normal courts uh, are, are not functioning. I mean, how can you have military courts in a democracy? Right. Uh, you've accused uh, the prime minister and the head of the army to be behind uh, uh, what you describe essentially as a political vendetta, even uh, some assassination uh, attempts. You've also called repeatedly for early elections. However, I heard you say this week that you would be ready to form a committee to negotiate with the authorities and trying to find a way out uh, and even step aside if need be. This sounds like... An olive branch. Uh, can you explain exactly uh, what this is about? Look, my go my government was removed uh, 13 months ago. Consistently, I have said that I'm a politician and we believe in dialogue and we want to talk. Problem is that the ones who removed me got scared that I had so much public support and the by-elections that took place subsequently out of 37 by-elections, my party swept 30 of them. So they got scared that the ones who removed me, they thought if there would be elections, I would be back. And therefore, even when the Supreme Court announced according to the Constitution's elections of the province of Punjab, where I'm sitting right now, which is 60% of Pakistan, the government refused to hold elections. So they are running away from elections. And meanwhile, what they're trying to do is to crush the party through these means, these fascist tactics. I mean, this unparalleled victimization that is going on right now, we've never seen this in our country. And actually, the worst is, is dismantling our democratic system because they're not listening to the courts of Pakistan. The courts give a judge, give, give, give some, someone bail. He's immediately picked up by the police and another case is slapped on him. There's custodial torture my people are facing. They're living in inhuman conditions. In condition, it's very hot right now. People are crammed in small cells. And therefore, they, then the magic word is that, look, we'll, we'll release you. All your cases will be, will be finished. All you have to do is say you renounce that you're no longer part of PTI. So that's what's happening. But Mark, you know, Political parties only weaken when their vote banks go down. What is happening is that there's more sympathy for my party than ever in our history. So the vote bank is increasing. It doesn't matter if people come and go, because all that matters is that in a parliamentary democracy, people will win on the ticket of PTI. And that's what will happen. Right. Uh, but uh, are you uh, forming a committee to try to negotiate with the authorities despite all the accusations, yes or no? Well, yes. I mean, I've, but this is not the first time. There was a committee before, too. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm announcing a committee today. The whole point is that our country is going down. Our economy is in a mess. We have the worst inflation in our history. Our, our, our growth rate has gone into minus from 6.1%. From uh, so exports, everything is going down. Uh, the, the entire revenue collected by our government goes into servicing our debt. So we're running our country on, on, um, on debts, on further loans. Therefore, my point is that right now, just to keep me out, there the whole system is crashing. I mean, the they're not holding elections. The courts, they don't listen to. The, the, the Constitution of Pakistan is discarded. So I'm saying that, look, why not hold talks and make me understand if you think that I'm such a big threat to this country? Well, on the negotiating table, make me understand. And if you don't want to hold the elections now in October, how does Pakistan benefit from that? Because our economy is sinking. Because because there is no political stability, there will not be any economic stability. So all I'm saying is that let's sit down and talk rather than this victimization which is going on and, and the merciless persecution of my workers and my all my senior leadership is in jail. They can only come out on one reason if they renounce uh, if they want, if they leave my party. Right. Uh, uh, just uh, so, uh, an important point. You mentioned uh, elections. You've called for early elections. They're slated for October. From what you just say, uh, I'm understanding that uh, you could accept 
holding the elections on schedule that is in October uh, and not necessarily continue to call for early elections. Is that correct, Imran Khan? Well, Mark, let me make you understand. If you dissolve I, out of the four provinces, my party was in power in two of them, which is 70 percent of Pakistan. So the, the Constitution says if you dissolve your government, the elections have to be held in 90 days. This is the Constitution of Pakistan. So I dissolved my two governments. More than 90 days have passed, but there are no elections because the government is refusing to hold elections. So we went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ordered elections in Punjab on the 14th of May. The government refused. So they are so scared of elections and they're scared of my parties sweeping the elections. They are, they are refusing. They are even violating the constitution of the land and the rule of law. So this is what's worrying right now. Uh, in the two provinces, according to constitution, there should have been elections. There are no elections. The main elections, the federal elections, are supposed to be held in October, which is fine, which is the government's prerogative. But my worry is they're not even going to hold elections in October if they think we are going to win. Right. Last question, Imran Khan. Obviously, uh, you've claimed that there were attempts on your life. Uh, do you feel safe right now at home or if you have to go to court again? Oh, I'm, I'm not at all safe because uh, the people who tried to kill me once when I had bullets in my legs, they tried to kill me again on the 18th of March. They, in the judicial complex, when I went in, I was very lucky to survive that because I just got out in nick of time, otherwise they would have killed me there. And the, my fear is that they know that even if I'm in jail, my party is going to sweep the elections. So I think that's why they will, you know, I feel there will be another attempt. In any case, I don't feel safe because the government which is supposed to protect you, they're trying to kill you. So obviously you don't feel safe. Imran Khan, that's all we have time for. I want to thank you very much for appearing on this edition of the France 24 interview from your home in Lahore in Pakistan. And thank you all for watching it.